So the question on whether you should get technical in a behavioral interview is quite an interesting one. And in today's video, I'm going to give you a couple of pointers that you would uh, probably want to consider while tuning up your answer and finding the right balance. And the first one, probably the more obvious of them would be what's your audience? Because uh, for example, in an on-site interview, if you know that your interview is a technical one, then probably you'd want to get slightly on the more technical side with, uh, with your answers. Uh, whereas, you know, in uh, telephone screening rounds, uh, if you see that the recruiter is not necessarily a technical recruiter, you, then you should maybe, maybe uh, not go that technical from your original answers. Although, you know, some recruiters would even prefer you uh, go technical, but that I believe it's something they, they could uh, very well ask you. Now, the second point I want to touch upon here is going technical in a behavioral interview one of your strengths? Because... Uh, it uh, sounded quite weird to me, but many candidates applying for technical roles in these jobs interviews um, were, were really asking me on how technical they should get for these jobs interviews. And um, I realized that, you know, some of you do not necessarily prefer getting technical from the first shot simply because, you know, your, uh, your knowledge uh, you're you're not a, a deeply technical person in the first place so um and by the way you know many of these people uh, were successful in their application so it's not that they didn't know what they were doing they knew what they were doing but they felt like keeping a more conversational approach a more high level approach in that conversation uh, would be a lot more to their advantage so um do you prefer getting technical and discussing technicalities during uh, for, for, for that specific answer or do you believe it's not to your advantage so again if it's your strength then go ahead get it as technical as possible but if it's not then you know you could go high level and see you know does the waters maybe they're maybe they're not that interested to get that technical right um, number three here closely linked with the sec with the second my previous point um, do you prefer dialogue or monologue in a job interview? For example, I know, uh, especially for technical candidates, for technical roles, uh, some of you prefer speaking for 10 minutes straight rather than uh, have, you know, a conversation exchange with, with your interview, rather than have, you know, a two minute answer than expecting follow up conversation, having essentially, you know, a dialogue. Um, so in your case, probably, you know, uh, trying out, you know, those lengthy answers um, might be the best way to go uh, or uh, as uh, as in my previous example if it's your strength if technical is your strength or not some people prefer you know to are more conversational than others so if this is the case find your pick your best uh, words pick your uh, best quantifiers uh, get the star format as quickly as possible in two minutes around two minutes that's uh, that's where i found the best uh, salespeople, you know, uh, get this, uh, their behavioral answers and then, you know, eventually start up a conversation, expect follow up questions and uh, basically bring the conversation to your advantage, G get the conversation to, to the way you want it to evolve. Right. So do you prefer a dialogue or a monologue? This is a, a, the number, the third point. And the, the last point I want to talk about, talk about here is uh, expectations. So what actually happens in these jobs interviews is that after the first answer, after the first couple of answers, there will be, um, you know, a, uh, a, a certain level of expectation that will be set by the interviewer, most likely. And for example, if you if at first you have a two minute answer and you, then you get three follow up questions with uh, a ton of details about the how your answer went, then probably you know, your next, next answer should be longer. Right, because they were so interested in all the details, and they they probably prefer more detail in that conversation. Um, or another example: if you go for ten minutes, and then they, uh, if you want to go for ten minutes, and then they cut you short midway, then probably you know it's because they want you to be more concise. Or if you go for five minutes, and you see they are taking a ton of notes, they are very interested in taking notes, or you know they are interested in doing their job, then probably it's uh, it's you're on the right spot here. But the idea is that it also it's very important that you understand the rapport uh, between you and your interviewer, and try to you know to 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 read the room if if at all possible over what actually will works best for that given situation. Now, um, as a, as a conclusion here, in my opinion, there there is such a thing 
as finding the ideal balance of how technically you should uh, you should go in a behavioral interview and it is in my opinion a combination between how well prepared are you to find that right balance for yourself to find the choice of words if you want and to find the situations that your examples from your career that you want to talk about and uh, the other side of the balance is you know you reading the room and see how the conversation evolves and adapting uh, your performance to the actual interview. So hopefully you found this uh, useful and thank you very much for watching.